And what I want to talk about today in my vlog is a criterion that I've established for why I make the art I do and how I think about it. And the criterion, or criterium, criteria? I don't know, is basically three categories. Context, iconography or content, and form, which is how the things look. And these are things that I used in art history uh, when I was teaching it for the last 25 years or so to talk about art, whether it was good or bad, or actually to just explain it. So let's talk about that and talk about these large pieces. Context changes everything and how you view a work of art or uh, a person or a book. It's the stuff that surrounds the work of art, the social stuff, the, um, the political stuff, the year it was made, the culture surrounding it, and the same thing is true with art. So for example, these chains hanging in the middle of this parkland, they don't really mean anything until you sort of have a context to understand it. One of the things that you would understand is if you're an arty person, maybe this is a piece of, of art, maybe this is an installation. But if you're not someone who's just walking through, then you would have to see the, um, the explanation on this little placard and then read it to understand what it means. Where you see something and what it is juxtaposed against actually matters to the meaning of the thing. For example, and remember this, so that's an idea about the fact that this guy, I can't even remember his name, and I suppose it's not important, took a banana, taped it to the wall of, it, of an art gallery, actually at some sort of uh, art convention, and then sold it for an exorbitant amount of money. So one of the things that I am thinking about and am trying to work out by making this video has to do with the idea of how um, my career is going and some ideas about art and moving my career in another direction, but also satisfying my other customers. So context really ties in with that. And then I'll talk about a little bit about the content or iconography and then about form when I'm about my paintings. So one of the things that I've been thinking about is I, I'm working on larger canvases. And the reason why I'm working on larger canvases is I had this notion that if I moved up in size, some of the galleries that I'm interested in might be interested in selling my work, but also uh, they're so it's so great to work on big size canvases and to work things out. And for the last since 2016, when I retired from my uh, professorship um, teaching art and art history, I have been working on smaller sizes and shipping smaller sizes and and working with clients who are basically interested in smaller works because they live in smaller spaces. They don't own lofts or anything like that. So I've been not able to really work on larger canvases, but in the last three years, I've made a couple of like six foot tall canvases, actually three or four, and I've made about 15 canvases this size. And I've, I've sold six of them and that's pretty good. But I was also thinking, well, maybe a gallery has the juice to sell these things. So the context of a gallery showing my work is different than showing my work, for example, in a online on Etsy. Now, if you look at my Etsy site, you'll see, or my website, you'll see I have 
Lots of people follow me. I, uh, I have almost 1,700 sales since I started the, um, the site years ago. Uh, I have regularly uh, a context of really good collectors who I'm friends with, who I uh, show my stuff on Facebook, Instagram, and, uh, and, other, and my blog. So I do pretty good in terms of having a good context and I wanted to talk about why I chose the context and the symbols or the content or iconography that I work with. So let's talk about the context of what I'm painting in the world that I'm in and how it relates to the content. I started painting men who looked like me because I saw a video by a guy named Michael Cuff who also is one of the directors of the Modern Eden Gallery, but also runs a site called the Warholian. And he gave a talk at the Art Academy uh, in San Francisco, which I watched. And basically what he talked about was he was representing a young woman who was a sort of goth rocker or emo kind of woman who was selling her work. And she was selling it because she was painting basically almost what looked like self-portraits, images of women who looked like her and of her specifically. And the reason why I'm bringing that up is I thought, oh, I'm a middle-aged, fat, balding, hairy guy. Who would be interested in portraits of me? And so I thought about who my friends were, and a lot of my friends are the same age as me, um, a lot of them are gay and have um, called themselves bears. And I thought, oh my, I should, I should start painting bears because that's who I am. It's, it's what I look like. And so it also helped to validate me as a human being and accept my body the way it looks, the aging process. So paintings of older, balding, hairy men really fit in with my criteria. And so I was able to be in the right context because of the friends that I had and who I knew. And also the content was truly sincere for me. And I was able to make a statement about who I am and have it really matter to me. And so those two things kind of fell in place. Now, the other thing that I think is really important about Art. So we've talked about context and I've talked about iconography or content in terms of work and why I paint the things that I do. For example, leather daddies are just, they're hot as hell. And they're also really beautiful looking people a lot of the time. They're wearing almost superhero costumes if you think about it. So they're interesting to paint. They, the iconography of what they're wearing is also interesting. But the formal aspect, and when I talk about form, um, that's what the majority of videos on YouTube are about and what most art books are about for, especially for beginners, and why I wanted to talk a little bit about context and, and iconography or content first. Formal analysis has to do with looking at something in terms of light, color, shading, the accuracy of the drawing, the way in which uh, the brush works, uh, the brush strokes work, the texture, the size uh, is also part of it, the scale of, of mark making. So one of the things about my paintings is I really try to develop a more formal um, craft in what I'm doing. So if you think about it, I've been painting since I'm eight years old and I really learned to oil paint when I was 14. So one of the things that I also learned to do was draw, and I'm still taking anatomy courses online through Proco and some other places, and I'm constantly working on the craft and skill. Everybody talks about talent when it comes to painting, but you know what? Talent can is just the ability to, um, is the motor skills that you have in terms of art. But the skill and the brush time and the experience and actual level of craft that you develop by learning about anatomy, by learning how to paint, by putting in the time, like I put in eight to 10 hours a day in the studio a lot of the time. So I really work on craft. 
And so one of the things about most of the paintings that I'm working on is that you'll see that I, first of all, I try to draw them really, really well. So the underdrawing, the underpinnings of the painting, I really have learned a lot about portraiture, about uh, the construction of muscles and bones. Then the next thing I think about is composition, which a lot of artists don't think about. So if you look at most of my paintings, you'll see that there is usually a zone in about a quarter of it where the visual interest is and there's a strong diagonal running through most of my canvases. And that's really an important thing that I'm not, I almost never work with symmetrical composition. I also try to make an unexpected composition and crop things in an interesting way that'll draw visual attention and emphasize what the subject matter is. Then the other thing is, I'm, I really love Caravaggio. I love the idea of chiaroscuro, which is basically harsh contrasts of light and shadow a lot of the time. I'm really interested in value and shading. And I'm also interested in color theory, but that's the last thing I work with, believe it or not. Artists are constantly you know, interested in color, but what's more important is the direction of the brush strokes, getting lots of thick paint on the, on the canvas, making this feel like a physical object. So one of the things, when you look at some of the paintings that I make over the years, and this is a really older one, this is probably from 2014, um, the texture is super thick on there. And so I'm constantly trying to um, really work the, the painting so that it has a lot of paint applied to it, and that makes it feel like a real object. It makes it feel like something that is... I spent some time, I layered some things up. So also the, the gesture in the brush stroke is really important, how the brush strokes define planes and move around things. And so that's another thing that I work with in terms of, of craft or skill. And it's taken me years to get there. And I have to use uh, brushes. Sometimes I even use house paint brushes to do it like thick uh, bristle brushes to get as much paint on there as possible and I also use plastering knives and and literally like spend like on a painting like these two sometimes it'll be a hundred bucks worth of paint on there and this canvas is about a hundred dollars so when I make a painting um, you know it's not just the time that I'm spending on it and the, t and the money that about being shipped and so on and so forth. I'm using tons of material and I have to get over that. I have to get over the fear of wasting money, so I just pile it on there. And so those are some of the other things in terms of the formal analysis. So in conclusion, more or less, one of the things that I wanted to talk about, especially for artists who are trying to, to hack the system or figure out a way to make better art. Every time I make a painting, I think about the context. Who are the people who are going to be looking at this painting? Who uh, is going to want to live with this painting? It's not all about me. But then I also think about what am I trying to say? How am I trying to express ideas? And part of what I'm expressing is about the beauty of, of middle-aged men. Okay. Then the next thing that I really uh, talk about is the content or iconography, and that relates to that context. It relates to the audience, but I just think that the content that I choose, painting men who are um, super sexy in their 50s, is a good content. And so I also try to make um, some of the abstract elements of my paintings part of the content, sort of going back to brushwork, texture and quality, and that's where the form comes in. So formal analysis and looking at your painting and thinking about building up the layers and how well this is drawn, not skimping on, anatom on anatomy, really understanding how uh, color theory works and how shading works. Those are all things you can't deny. And one of the things that I do is I make a lot of drawings to get there. So those are the, the three categories that I want um, artists to think about and it's what I think about every day when I'm in the studio. So thank you very much for uh, watching my video, my, my, my new vlog. You know, I'm just trying to make videos every once in a while and share some of the things that I think are important for artists to know.